Chapter 5 The Mate's Wife That the captain of the Vital Spark should so persistently remain a bachelor surprised many people. He was just the sort of man, in many respects, who had fallen easy prey to the first woman on the lookout for a good home. He had rather a gallant way with the sex, generally said men to them all, regardless of class, liked their society when he had his Sunday clothes on, and never contradicted them. If he had pursued any other calling than that of mariner, I think he would have been captured long ago. His escape doubtless lay in the fact that sailing about from place to place, only briefly touching the West Coast Keys, and then being usually grimed with coal dust, he had never properly roused their interest and natural sporting instincts. They never knew what a grand opportunity they were losing. "'I'm astonished you never got married, Captain,' I said to him recently. "'Ach, ach, I, I couldn't have been bothered,' he replied, like a man who had given the matter his consideration before now. "'I'm not busy with this ship, I have not time. Ah, "'There's an awful lot to bother about a wife, "'for by my heart's in the fatal spark, eh? "'there's no a smerter boat in the trade. "'Wait you till I get her painted.' "'But a ship's not a wife, Captain,' I protested. "'No,' said he, "'but it's a responsibility. "'You can get a wife any time that'll stick to you the same "'as if she was riveted, as long as you draw your pay. "'But it takes a man with all his senses about him "'to get a ship and keep her. "'And just think on the expense. "'Oh, I'm not saying, mind you, that I'll not try one some day. Ah, "'But there's no hurry, no, not a bit.' "'But perhaps you'll put it off too long,' I said, "'and when you're in a humour to have them, they won't have you.' "'He laughed at the very idea. Oh, "'Man,' he said, "'it's easy seeing you have not studied them. "'I ken them like the Kyles of Butte. "'The captain of a steamer is the most popular man in the wide world, "'popularer than the ministers themselves.' And the ministers is that popular that women put bird lime in front of the manses to catch them, the same as if they were green linties. Oh, it's worse with sea captains. They're that dashing, and they're not always hanging about the house with their slippers on. Oh, there's another thing, he added after a little pause. I couldn't put up with a woman coming about the vessel every payday. No, no, I'm for none of that. Doogie's wife's plenty. "'But surely she does not invade you weakly,' I said, surprised. "'If the vital sparks anywhere inside her lament on a Saturday,' said Parahandy, "'she's doing with a first steamer from Glasgow, and her door-key in her hand, "'the same as if it was a pistol to put to his heat. "'If Doogie was here himself, he would tell you. "'She's a low-country woman, we know a word of Gaelic, "'so that she can understand Doogie at his best.' When it comes to being angry in English, she can easy beat him. Oh, a clever woman. She made Doogie a wretch a bite, and he's always one when he's at home. And at keeping him trim and tidy in his clothes, she's just sublime. But she's no canny about a ship. The first week after she married him, we were lying at an Ellen, and doon she came on the Saturday we our door key at full cock. When Doogie saw her come and doon the key, he got white and turned to me, saying, Peter, here's the mistress. Oh, I wish I hadn't touched that dram. She'll can tell it on me, and I'm no fear for her, but it would hurt her feelings. Man, I said, you're an awful tummed man for a sailor, but uh, haste you doon the forecastle, and you'll get a poke of peppermint sweeties in my other pocket I had for the church tomorrow. "'Just you go like the devil, and I'll keep her in conversation till you get your breath shifted.' Doogie bolted down below and was up in a shot. "'I got the sweeties, Peter,' he said. "'But, oh, she is as cunning as a jailer, and she'll chaloose something if she smells the peppermints. "'What would you say to the whole of us taking one or two sweeties so that we would all be the same and she wouldn't suspect me?' "'Oh, very well,' I said. "'Anything to oblige a mate.' And when the good lady reached the side of the vessel, the engineer and the tar and me and Doogie was standing in a row, 
eating peppermints till you would think it was a front say to the Tobermory Free Church. It's a fine day and an awful smell of lozenges, was the first word she said when she put her two feet on the deck and she looked very keen at her man. It is that, ma'am, I said. It's a cargo. What cargo? she said, looking at Doogie harder than ever. I'll cargo him. I mean the cargo of the boat, ma'am, I said, quite smart. It's a general cargo, and there's six ton of peppermint sweeties for the Tarbert fishermen. What in the wide world do the Tarbert fishermen do with so many sweeties? she said. Oh, it's just to keep them from frightening away the heron when they're out at the fishing, I says. Oh, man, I'm telling you, I had all my wits about me that day. Uh, it was lucky for us the hatches was doing so that you couldn't see the cargo we had in the hold. <laughs> there wasn't a sweetie among it. I couldn't have but be nice to the woman, for she wasn't my wife. So I turned the bucket upside down and gave her a seat and let on that Dookie was just as much a man of consequence on the vital spark as myself. It does not do to let a wife see with her own eyes that her man is under you in your job, for when she'll get him home she'll egg him on to work harder and get your place. And where are you then, eh? Where are you then, I'm asking? Ah, she was a clever woman, but she had no sense. Well, said she, I don't think muckle of your boat... I thought it was a great big boat with a cabin in it. Instead of that, it's just a wee collion. Man, do you know that vexed me. I say she wasn't the kind of woman Doogie should have married at all, at all. Doogie's a gentleman like myself. He would never hurt your feelings unless he was trying. There's nothing wrong with a vital spark, ma'am, I said to her. She's the most namely ship in the trade. They'll be writing things about her in the papers, and men often come to take photographs of her. She just sniffed her nose at that, the way married women have, and said, hmm, Just fancy that. Yes, just fancy it, I said to her. Six knots in a gale of wind, if MacPhail the engineer is in good trim, and maybe seven if it's a Saturday and him in a hurry to get home. She has the finest lines of any steamboat of her size coming out of the Clyde. If her lum was painted yellow and she had a bottom strake or two of green, you would take her for a yacht. Perhaps you would be thinking we should have a German bond on board of her, with a heat fiddler going about gathering pennies in a shell, and the others kicking over the ends of their flutes and cornucopias for fear he'll pocket some, what? Huh? Just that. After a bit, she said she would like to see what sort of place her man and the rest of us slept in, so there was nothing for it but to take her down to the folks, and though it was much against my will... When she saw the forecastle, she was nastier than ever. She says, Surely this is not a place for Christian men. And I said, No, ma'am, but we are just sailors. There's no erect furniture in it, she says. Oh, not at present, ma'am, I said. Perhaps we're expecting a piano. But, ach, oh, she was just one of them Glasgow women she did not know life. She went away up the tune there at den and came back with a bit of wax cloth, a tin of black soap, a grocer's calendar, and a wee looking glass, hung her bonnet and the door key on a cleat, and started scrubbing out the forecastle. Man, it was just pitiful. There was a damp smell in the forecastle I could feel for months after, and I had a cold in my heat for a fortnight. When she had the floor of the forecastle scrubbed, she laid the bit of wax cloth, got two nails from the tar, and looked for a place to hang up the calendar and the wee looking glass, though there was not much room for ornaments of the kind. That's a little mere tidy like, she said when she was finished, and she came up looking for something else to wash. The tar saw the danger and went ashore in a hurry. Are you married? she asked me before she left the vessel with Doogie's pay. Uh, "'No, ma'am,' I said. I, "'I'm not married yet.' "'I could easy see that,' she said, sniffing her nose again. "'The same as if I was not a captain at all, but just before the mast. "'I could easy see that. "'It's time you were hurrying up. "'I ken the very wife would suit you. "'She's a cousin of mine, a widow woman, no a bit the worse of the wear.' "'Oh, just that.' said I, but I'm engaged. 
ought to, she asked quite sharp, no very sure of me. To one of the maids of Butte, ma'am, I told her, meaning yon two painted stones you see from the steamer in the Kyles of Butte, and her being a Glasgow woman and not travelled much, she thought I was in earnest. I don't ken the family, she said, but it's my opinion you would be better with a sensible widow. Not at all, ma'am, I said. A sailor couldna have a better wife nor one of the maids of Butte. He'll maybe no get much talker with her, but she'll no come hunting the keys for him or his wages on the Saturday.'